Ryan here with longrangeonly.com and today we're going to do a real quick review on the Bat Machine Vampire Action. So we got this about eight months ago and I'm going to back up a little bit for history um, purposes. A couple years ago they released the Bumblebee which is the short action version of this and I was a little disappointed because I'm not a big short action fan and I was hoping they would come out with a long action version. Well, roughly a year later, they introduced this Bat Vampire. And I knew right away that I needed to get my hands on one, so we called them up and, and we worked up this build. So I've been shooting it now for about eight months, and I, I feel like I have enough time behind it to talk about it and kind of separate the differences. And they're, they're very small differences, but I think they do matter. Uh, I know everyone's probably going to want to know, so this is a 300 WSM, it's an International Barrels 26 inch barrel, it's got a Rockslide TI Pro brake, it's got an Altera Arms carbon stock, which is one of my favorite stocks, we've got a review on one of these already, and then it's got the Altera Arms bottom metal, and it's got a Bix and Andy Dakota trigger, which I'll be doing some trigger reviews later down the road. I've uh, been using several different ones over the past couple years, but really like this one. So, the biggest thing, I think, flat out that's going to separate this from other actions and the reason why I was excited about it is because I don't like super heavy rifles. I, I would like to keep them as light as I can get them within reason, but still have a decent profile on the barrel, which is why I prefer carbon to have a bigger break so that we can tame the recoil on some of these magnums. The titanium actions that I have used in the past that help keep that weight down are prone to premature pressure indications, mainly in the form of bolt click. So I've experienced that over several different cartridges, comparing them side by side with steel actions. Other renowned gunsmiths will tell you the same thing, and some of them won't, won't uh, suggest building them a lot of them will build you whatever you want, but they're going to probably try to steer you away from it. Some of the action manufacturers out there refuse to build them, and uh, refuse may be a strong word, but have resisted to this point, and I really don't see that happening. Bat Machine's one of them, Kelbley's another one of them, and there, there are several others, but we're not going to get focused on that. I, I, and I won't tell you that I'm not going to build another titanium action, but there are some downfalls to it. So... When they came out with this aluminum action, I, I was very interested. Now the Stoll Panda has been around for years and years and years. It's aluminum action with a steel insert. It's won several Benchrest uh, competitions, countless I would say Benchrest competitions. So the design or the idea behind using aluminum with a steel insert is not new and it has been proven. There is also anecdotal evidence that suggests that an aluminum action may be capable of having higher or smaller ags as far as accuracy goes. And what I mean by that, if you took a thousand steel actions, a thousand aluminum actions, and, and built rifles that are very similar, that the, the aluminums might shoot a little bit smaller. Now in a hunting rifle, I can almost guarantee you're not gonna shoot small enough to be able to notice the difference. But I throw that out there because there, like I said, is anecdotal evidence that supports that. Now, Bat Machine did do some different things in here, and they're not going to they're not going to talk about that. It is proprietary, so it's not like they just ripped off the Stoll Panda. But let's talk about the the big picture on the action. It's an aluminum action with a steel insert, so the steel is where we need that pressure container to be right up here in the the tenon of the the barrel area so where it threads together it's going to help contain that pressure which is really the only thing we need that really high strength for. It's an integral rail which I've gotten to the point where I really try to avoid having an action that's not integral rail just because I've had so many failures and this takes one more uh, likelihood of a failure out of the picture. So like I said long action, the Bumblebee would be their short action version, the, the Vampire's the long action version. Aluminum, it's a flat bottom, so it's got a big, generous bedding surface, and we, I think, all know at this point how, how important getting that mating surface between the receiver and the stock to be as close to 
the same as possible is, is very important to accuracy. So big picture, that's what's going to set this thing apart from other, other actions out there. Then we're going to talk real quick about some of the things that are not new to people. Um, look, at, look at the side bolt release here, and I'll, I'll drop in some, some close-ups here. It's not new. They've been using these for years, but I would consider that to be standard. Uh, Bat machine has a little bit different ignition system. It, there's some stuff going on inside of here that separates it from the others. I'm not going to start talking about details, but their accuracy record in bench rest and F class and those types of things proves that they have figured out the ignition system. This is no different. Um, it does have an M16 style extractor and then it's got a plunger style ejector. The M16 is my favorite of something that we actually use. The only thing that's going to be a little bit more uh, robust in my opinion is something like a Mauser or a Model 70 pre-64 or a classic with that big claw, but we don't typically use those on push feeds. So the M16 style is probably the best out there. Uh, the plunger is no, not new to anyone. Most of the stuff we use is a plunger. I actually have come to prefer the uh, mechanical ejectors, probably one of my favorites, the TG from uh, Kelby, but that's what we've got here. So the, the biggest question that I'm going to get asked or I have been asked is what's different from this versus the Nanook and the biggest thing is going to be aluminum versus steel um, and then like I said the, the, the extractors are a little bit different. I prefer the mechanical or sorry, the ejectors are different. The extractors are different as well. I'll come back to that in a second. But the ejectors are different. I prefer the mechanical over the, the plunger, but the plunger works. I've never had a problem with it that I would can say that I would say is consistent. Sometimes I'll get some brass in them, you clean them out. No big deal. The other one, the, the Kelby has a Saco style extractor, which is one of two extractors I've actually had fail, the Saco and the Savage style that uh, like Zermatt Arms likes to use and then obviously Savage likes to use. I've had those fail and I've had Sockos fail. They're easy to fix and they're easy to replace, but they're just not as robust as the M16 in my opinion. So we will have a separate review on the Nanook. Uh, I haven't really spent enough time with it to, to do that review, but I do get a lot of questions. And so those are the big differences. As far as pre preference to one over the other, um, it's really hard to say that neither one of them is perfect in my opinion, but they're both very, very good actions and you wouldn't go wrong with either one of them. The other question that I get all the time is, is this action worth $1,800? And I'm going to say flat out yes. Now it's hard, it's hard for me to quantify if you don't have the $1,800 to spend, then I guess you just can't do it. But when you're talking about building a five or $6,000 rifle and then putting another you know, two thousand to three thousand dollar optic on it. I think the extra three to four hundred dollars that you're going to spend on this action is a, is a moot point, really. And I wouldn't hesitate to do it. You know, why? I like the fact that it's aluminum over titanium. It's got the steel insert to house all the the pressure, so that's a non-issue. It's an integral rail. I like that it's a flat bottom action with lots of bedding surface. Bat Machine obviously has their ignition system figured out. This gun is super accurate. And I, it's really hard to explain, and I'm not going to sit here and do a bunch of measurement on tolerances, but I do think that the, interfe the interference between the bolt and the receiver feels a little bit tighter than some of the other actions out there, yet I have had no problems with it binding in dirty conditions. As far as the timing, which is a big thing to me, it's near perfect. Uh, right out of the box. I haven't touched it and I really do appreciate that. I also kind of feel like it's a little bit better at handling pressure than some of the other actions I've had. You can run this thing well into uh, signs of pressure, you know, ejector marks, uh, loose primer pockets, and it still doesn't give any bolt click. Um, now, I think it, for those that, uh, it's worth mentioning, for those that were watching the uh, vlog as I was doing load development on this, some of the ADG brass wasn't getting sized at first because the 
Hornady die I had was just not sizing enough. I switched over to the Bullet Central, that went away. Those were not pressure signs, and I, I, I think it's worth pointing out. What I'm talking about with no bolt click on high pressure is actual pressure signs, not due to sizing issues. And, and I don't have any way to prove that. I'm just telling you that after eight months of use versus dozens of other actions over thousands and thousands of rounds that this seems to handle pressure a little bit better. I don't recommend you using that to your advantage and running higher pressure in your cartridges. I'm just telling you that because if you have something like a, some moisture or whatever get in your your chamber when you're hunting that it's not going to lock up on you or not going to have that little bolt click that could cost a split second on a follow-up shot for an animal. So I do think it's it's worth noting. Let's go ahead and wrap this up and I do want to emphasize again that when people ask me if it's worth $1,800, absolutely worth $1,800 to me. I would not hesitate to use this action on another build and I do not see myself getting rid of this one anytime soon. Uh, it, it's probably something I'm going to keep around for a while. Aluminum action, long action, integral rail, side bolt release. It's got a steel insert to contain the pressure and it's got a two-piece bolt so you can swap out the bolt face if you want to go from a Magnum cartridge to a standard cartridge. M16 style extractor which is my favorite. It's got a plunger style ejector which has worked for years and years and years. I think that if you're looking for an action for your next build and lightweight is one of your concerns, you definitely have to look at the Bat Vampire. It's, it's one of, I would say one of the three best out there if not the best out there when it comes to everything that we need and everything we expect out of an action that's going to cost over a thousand dollars it's got it and it does it at 26 ounces so like I said if you're if you're looking for uh, an action for your next build you gotta check out the Bat Vampire. We'll have a link in the description below to a thread on the forum if I miss something or you have a specific question just head over there and ask me, I'm, I'm usually on there daily, and if you tag me, um, uh, I'll get those answered as quickly as I can. I do subscribe to those threads, so I should have no problem getting those answered for you at, uh, as soon as I get on there. Uh, please like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and turn on notifications so you can be notified of future videos. We appreciate you taking the time to watch. Have a great day.